How's it going guys? Today I'm going to be reviewing the GVM P80S. Looking at this light here, I can get over how cute and adorable this little thing is, even though it's a powerful little light. This is my iPhone here. My iPhone is longer than this light. And this video here, I'm going to be reviewing this thing right and answering every question that you guys have from brightness, how the light looks on the face, with the soft box and everything else, uh, flicker effect, everything that you want to know. So sit back and relax, don't skip anything. Watch this video through the end and then you're going to know everything that I want to show you here. I'm pretty sure most of you guys know that you can't use this light outdoors unless there's an AC outlet available. As a matter of fact, the way I'm plugging this light right now, this light is not connected to any AC outlet. The GVM P80S is a COB chip kind of light and is a very powerful yet very, very little light. It's actually very cute, by the way. And it's very simplistic. As you can see, it features no display on the back here. All you have is a little potentiometer. The P80S, unfortunately, doesn't come with the case. This to me is extremely important, but I really wish it came with the box. I wouldn't mind paying 25, 30, even $40 more, but it's always frustrating when you have to receive a light here and then you have to spend at least two hours on eBay on Amazon try to find a box that measures like two feet this way by six inches high and eight inches wide. There were some duffel bags that I could find even though they're very thin. Again, the packaging material that you can actually grab it out of the box and put it inside the duffel bag, but finding a 24 inch long duffel bag is not a big deal, nice and black and everything. But the problem is it's always too tall, too wide because this thing measures exactly two feet by six inches or so uh, height and about eight inches wide. So I wish there was a, a little case for this light. Before I continue further talking about the light, I wanna show you guys something that I do to every single light that I have regarding the power supply. As you can see here, I use a little Velcro system because I hate when these things are hanging and dangling here. So it's a very quick thing. You just uh, put a, the coarse uh, side of the Velcro here, attaching to the power supply itself. And then you find the soft part of the Velcro to uh, wrap it around. So you start it from here and then loop through here. And then I put some furniture self-stick pad here. Right now I'm currently out of it, but I'm using uh, whatever it is that you guys want to use. And then you firmly press it against the stand pole here. And then this power supply is not going anywhere. You can actually lift the stand, this thing is going with it. And just in case you need extra reach, you can actually unveil this whole thing in here and actually put the power supply all the way on the legs of the stand. And it's always a good thing that you keep the original factory bending on the wire. So look how easy it is to velcro this up. Then again, Put it on the pole here, it takes what, three seconds to do. It also comes with this type of reflector here. Apparently a lot of people are being inspired by the aperture. I mean, not quite as nice as the aperture, but you know, they usually do the same design now instead of the standard reflector. Some lights, they have some kind of a clipping going on inside this little ring here, which avoids the reflection from rattling. So this one here, when you attach the reflector, some people complain that it rattles a little bit. I don't see what the big deal is because once you put the reflector here, you're not going to be carrying the light around. So, you know, once you put it in here, no big deal, but it will rattle a little bit. But when we actually put a soft box here with the actual speed ring, somehow it doesn't rattle, maybe because of the weight of the soft box. But just so you know, there's some rattle in here. Now, without wasting a single second of your time, let's talk about something that everybody wants to know also, which is the fan noise. I have a Rode NTG4 Plus microphone here. I'm exactly 11 inches away from the microphone. As you can see, I can actually touch the microphone here. And the fan noise of this light here, I think they did a fantastic job, but the RPM that they chose here, I think the light will get pretty hot to over 100, 107, maybe 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So as long as you don't use this thing at 100% for a long time, you'll be good to go. But if if it is very warm, the location that you're shooting, and you crank this up to 100% in most cases. So for a scenario like this, regular interview using 1K light and everything. So I have the Godox SL60W here set to 52%, which in this case here, since this is an 80 watt, I would assume that will be around 41, 40 some percent, but you won't have to use this whole thing cranked up to 100% all the time, because if you do, the light is gonna get pretty hot to uncomfortable ways to uh, handle the light when you touch it here. It will be very, very hot, exceeding 100, 110 degrees, something like that. So in most situations, when you put a soft box in this light, which of course the dual layer diffusion is gonna absorb a lot of light output, you can actually turn this up to 50% or 65% and the light is not gonna get incredibly, ridiculously hot. It's gonna be very manageable. You can still touch this here only when you are 100%, wait another 30 minutes, and then this thing's gonna be really hot. Another thing to keep in mind, everything that you put in front of this reflector here, especially this, you're gonna actually 
almost suffocate the light, so the heat buildup here is going to increase. So be careful not to blast this to 100% because you're going to really overheat the light and the LEDs, they like to work cool, you know, as cool as possible. So heat is something that definitely will damage any LED, it doesn't matter if it is a COB or those square light panels, it doesn't matter. So pretty much any light that I have, I avoid cranking this up to 100% because I know it's going to be shortening the lifetime of the LEDs. So I have the microphone hardly off frame and the light is right here just a foot away from me. So I'm gonna be putting the light against the wall over there and you're gonna see how the noise is non-existent. So see if you can hear anything. I'm gonna wait here five, six seconds for you. So this light was only six feet away from the wall over there. I can actually touch the wall. So if you need for the distance with the fan noise, you can even put the light even more far away, but usually a key light stands about four feet away, so, so fan noise with this, I don't think it is a problem whatsoever. So with the gels, they include some red, some blue, some green, and some pink. I don't know what's up with the pink, they should have included the tungsten gel, but you can actually find on Amazon and eBay this uh, reflector holders here. I'll try to give the link on the description here because the name is a little complicated, but this easily uh, attached to the reflector here. But keep in mind that this reflector that come with the slide here, they are a few millimeters too small, so this is not gonna hold well here. It's supposed to be very tight, but this particular reflector here, just so you know, you might have to put a little uh, gaffer tape here just in case because this is what's gonna happen. So it's gonna fall a little bit, but it does the job. And if you want to apply a little diffusion here, the same exact thing, eclipse in front of this uh, reflector here, but keep in mind when you crank this up to 100%, don't forget that you're actually building up a lot of heat here and the LEDs they really don't like and this thing gets really hot. I don't care if it is an Aperture 300D, especially that for being a 300 watt. Be careful when you use these things in front of a reflector of any LED light that you have. Cheap, expensive, I don't care. Because I'm always nervous when I put a uh, something here in front of the reflector because the heat build up here is ridiculous, especially on a 300 watt light. So you want to see this thing breathing as much as possible. So if you want to use anything for the reflector here, make sure this is at 50% or lower. This light here for being at 80 watt, I think you can get away with probably 75%, but usually keep it at 50 or even 40. The Godox SL60W gets really hot with the light at 85%, as long as there's something blocking the reflector here. And as you can see in the back here, all you see is a little potentiometer starting from the very minimum. I don't know if that's 1%, 5 or 10% because it doesn't have a display here. But I don't mind the fact that it doesn't have a display, although I really like displays. So the way you control this potentiometer here, you gotta raise it very slowly if you want any type of fine adjustment. So as long as you turn this potentiometer here, which I think is pretty smooth, it can actually create a very linear ramp of brightness here. As you can see the washed out part in the center there it's slowly growing. So I'm gonna go back to uh, three o'clock here, which I would say 75%. I can still see my uh, zebra over there, my false color changing colors over there. So some YouTubers were saying there's no difference between about 60% to 100%. Yes, there is. 75%, 100%. You can see the difference over there. So from zero to like, 12 noon is this, and then 12 noon to 3 o'clock you get this, and then 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock, it's right there. So I think this potentiometer is pretty nice. And then to turn it off, just click it. Turn it on, click it again. Then again your whole ramp sheet. This whole thing is stepless as you can see, it's very smooth. No complaints about that. I was trying to power this unit using a set of V-mount batteries. For example, I have the GVM50RS, the RGB lights, and the uh, jack here allows me to plug a V-mount battery straight to that if I don't want to use the Sony MPF batteries. But this little light here actually has a 30 volt jack, which doesn't even make tickles when you plug in the V-mount battery here. It simply doesn't even turn on. So if you want to take this outdoors, you can, as long as you buy a pretty decent power bank, the ones that have a AC outlet built in. So don't think they can go to Walmart and buy the El Cheapo, the power inverter they sell there, because there are two types of power inverter. Your home outlet is a 
3% harmonic distortion total, which is very clean electricity, and it's a pure sine wave. The frequency is like this. The Walmart stuff is a square wave, which is very harmful for anything that has a circuit board, especially more expensive lights with more intricate electronic components there. So the square wave inverse, they're okay for vacuum cleaners, you know, tire pumps, stuff like that, but not even for microwaves, because a microwave also has a display and also circuit board inside this. It's rather delicate. So the uh, uh, pure sound wave is ideal for anything they want to power cameras anything with a circuit board you get the point so this is what this device is like to be charged or to be powered by okay if you use the square wave bad news so i'm just gonna hook this up here so let's power this on here and i'm gonna show you the buzzing that this produces So that's enough for me, so no more. I don't want to damage my light. Now here for yourself, there is no buzzing, there is no humming of any kind thanks to the pure sine wave this generator provides. Now a few things that I don't like about this light, starting with the rattling, it's no big deal, but it's here, and also the ratchet system that they have here, so when you actually tilt the light up and down, you have this thing here that you can actually uh, go where you want. You have to wait until the click happens and then you kind of lock it in place. But it allows it to stay like straight like that or fully upwards. Another thing that I don't like is because you cannot pull it out. So if it stops right here, it is what it is. I wish this thing kind of pulled out and then I can actually aim this somewhere that doesn't get in the way. And lastly is the fact that this whole thing here is made of plastic. The only thing that holds this metal here is a little metal, very similar to the iPhone selfie chippy things that I see that the, that thing can actually break off very easily over here. You know what I'm talking about. It's one of those, those little gold colors kind of a threads that is attached to the plastic here. So I'm actually very uncomfortable putting a larger soft box here because you cannot tighten. I wouldn't recommend at all if you over tighten this because trust me, you're gonna crack this thing in half here. They should have put this thing here as metal, at least the part that you mount on the stand. But if you use common sense and uh, tighten just enough so the light doesn't come off the stand, I think you're gonna be okay. I can see it will hold a parabolic soft box, but don't try to install a parabolic soft box here because the weight of that thing, I'm talking about the one that's very deep, right? This will actually make you want to tighten this more. So the soft box that I recommend here as far as size and weight is about 30, 32 inches, not too deep for this light here, which is pretty normal and good enough for interview sets like this. But don't put anything massive like 55 inch, especially the parabolic balance, because you're gonna break this thing here. Now most of you guys know the LED set to 100%, there's no flickering problem. So I'm gonna be turning this off and use the minimum over here. So as you can see, there's no flicker here. Pretty much any light that you purchase after the year 2018, you're not gonna have any flicker problems because every manufacturer knows that they can't have any flickering with the slides here. And also every manufacturer is trying to do a good job regarding the fan as quiet as possible, but regarding flickering here, as you can see, there's no flicker. And actually I made a little test here using my iPhone shooting the uh, LCD display on my camera. But on a studio interview set like this, who actually shoots at that speed? So anything about two hundredths of a second 300 or 60 you know you'll be fine unless otherwise you're using a high-speed camera in which you're not going to use a little GVM P80S to do this you want to use a powerful light such as Iris car panel or probably HMI lighting or whatever it is on a high-end scale to make sense you're using an expensive uh, high-speed camera and also taking into account that a high-speed camera needs a lot of light and this one here might not even do the trick Another thing that I like about this light, because it comes with a convenient umbrella mount over here, let's say that you don't have any lighting modifiers at all, such as a soft box or anything like that. So if this is the only light that you have so far, all you have to do is uh, put the umbrella in here, and I don't recommend to use the reflector because the light is gonna be easier to manage inside the umbrella here. So remove the uh, reflector. When you use an umbrella with this light or any light, remove the reflector because you don't want any hot spots. Allow the light to be as soft as possible and as wide as possible for even distribution. And as you can see, the P80S with the umbrella attached to my face is a pretty decent key light. The light is falling very softly on my face, achieving very nice results. And as long as you know what you're doing, a little concept of lighting and everything, you can actually achieve very nice images with budget things like this. Just an umbrella and a little P80S like this. One interesting thing that I'm looking at the menu here about Wi-Fi 
he says he uh, is able to reset the Wi-Fi using the password. This light doesn't have Wi-Fi. I actually tried because I have a bunch of DVM lights and I have my DVM Easily app here. I was searching to see on settings on the Wi-Fi to see if this thing would appear. No, there's no Wi-Fi antenna here. I have no idea why this thing is on the manual. So disregard this when you read it. There's no Wi-Fi. All you have here is a potentiometer in the back from off to minimum to maximum and that's it, a little umbrella mount and the speaker to mount on the stand and the reflector, that's it. So the final thoughts here, do I recommend this light? I would say yes, especially at $117 and sometimes they even have coupons on Amazon they can buy for even less. At the time I'm making this video, this light is sold for $117.99. So for what the light is, how much it costs, I think most people that I see that's gonna buy this light is like YouTubers or somebody beginning or students and everything or people on the budget. And for what it is, 80 watts of power, which is a pretty decent amount of power this thing provides. And also it is so adorable. I have so many lights that I don't even know what to do with them from my previous reviews and also the lights that I bought. But I was gonna sell this light later or give it to somebody else, but uh, I really like the, how cute this thing is. And it's very powerful. I can actually take this on the field without worrying about fancy displays on the back and everything. And this is so light. I'm lifting this thing with a pinky. So this is definitely a keep for me here. So I really like the light for what it does. And if you want to use this with the Godox SL60W, which is also another budget light, I'm comparing apples to apples. It matches pretty close the color cast of this light because some LEDs, they fall slightly on the green and slightly on the magenta. If that wasn't true, they wouldn't make high-end light panels. They adjust the fine tuning between the magenta or the green side, right? So most lights, they have a slight magenta tint and some other lights such as the Jinbei EF200, they fall slightly on the green Cast. So actually this is a very good light and for this price you cannot complain about the color temperature even if this is not 5600 degrees Kelvin scientifically right on the dot maybe if it is 54.5 it doesn't matter just adjust your camera white balance or adjust a little something post-production and there you go. But I don't even think that's going to be the case either because to what I can see on my monitors, you have a small HD monitor on top there. I think the image is looking pretty good. I'll be able to see on the computer what's going on. But right now I can see the raw images unedited. They look pretty good, especially for a light, little light like this. And to what this light is and how much it costs, I think the quality of light that comes out of this light is going to be very satisfactory to a lot of people who are in a budget that's going to be purchasing this light. There's no complaint whatsoever about that. If you need to color correct anything, it's going to be a very minor new something in post-production. This light has a CRI on 97. I don't have a color spectrometer for that, but that's what they say. And also this will work in any way in the world because the power supply will automatically switch the voltage from 110 to 220. And this light weighs about 900 grams, which is close to two pounds, so extremely light. And this light at 100% has 13,000 lux with a distance of half a meter from the wall and also 4,100 lux with a distance of one meter away from the wall. So if you research about the inverse square law on Google, you will know what that is. As you can see, for example, the light fall off here. From here to there, you lost about 75% of the light output and everything else here is almost uh, no difference. I don't know why the lux is something that everybody finds so important because by f-stop is a much easier way to understand. So let's say that there's light at four meters away, I'm gonna tell you that this is actually 1,646 lux. Nobody knows what that is, but if I told you that at four meters away, the light is reading at f-28 at ISO 850, it's very easy to understand. So instead of measuring that lux stuff, I'm gonna be measuring things in f-stop using that uh, screen projector that I have here, which can give you a pretty good idea. And by the way, when you film, your camera is asking for f-stops not lux. So right now I have this light placed exactly one meter away from my projection screen here and I'm using a light meter measuring this light exactly from the very center all the way here. So at the very minimum it's reading f28.5 at ISO 830 frames per second. Now with the light at 50% uh, is reading 11 and a half and now at 100% is reading 16 and a half. This is with the reflector. Now without the reflector, F2, F50%, F8, and then 100%, F11. And with an umbrella, F14. Now at 50% with the umbrella, we're having a 5.6, and at 100%, we're having F8. Now with the softbox, I'm getting F14 and a half almost. 
At 50%, I'm getting F5.6, almost F8. And with this at full power, I'm getting F8.5. Now I'm gonna show you guys this light can do some sort of a linear fashion with the uh, brightness of this light. Right now I'm at 75%, as you can see here. And the light is reading F16.5. Now I'm gonna jump to 100%. And from 16 and a half is gonna jump to 16.7. So there is a little bit of gain right here. So there's a difference between 75% and 100% because some people are saying that there's no difference whatsoever between 75 to 100, which there is. It's almost like a third of a stop. So you're actually getting your little bit from 75 to 100%. So that's my review of the GVM P80S. If you like what you saw, if lighting is your thing, please consider subscribing to this channel. And if you want to leave a comment, I like and respond to every comment that I see there. And also, thank you very much for watching this video and see you next time.